Hey YouTube, this is Nick, and welcome to episode 10 of Designing an Epoxy Granite Benchtop Mill. I changed the design completely. This is where I am today, and this is where I was the last time we met. And the areas I needed to hold a screw were metal that were embedded into the granite epoxy. What I changed to uh, an aluminum extrusion, it's 6 inches square, and it's 1 half inches thick. That extrusion will be the column, and it will be the base. It will still be filled with epoxy granite. So let me show you how I got here. I had done quite a bit of work on this older design, but it was concept work. The concept work is easy to do when you're designing something. What you see here, I might have a week or two weeks into it. So if I count all my hours on this, it's not that many hours. To get this to actually work and get it from concept to engineering, that's where you have to put all the little details in. Putting those details in and getting it right and getting it manufacturable, even if I'm going to make this in my garage, is at least 10 times the work, probably 20 times the work as doing the concept. I had started doing that. Uh, this was still the concept. And then this la next one here, I was starting to rebuild the CAD. And then I said to myself, I want to take a step back and explore some other brainstorms before I go too far down this path and spend all that time in the engineering phase of the project. And I want to return to the brainstorming phase to make sure this is the form factor I want. One of the reasons I wanted to do that was I realized making the forms for the epoxy granite out of MDF or melamine coated particle board would be a lot of work to design them and to fixture them and to make them. And I kept thinking to myself, is there some other form factor of this machine where I don't have to spend so much time making the forms and I can use the materials that will hold the epoxy as part of the frame? One thing I was looking at was extrusions. These extrusions I found all over eBay. Uh, they're two inches by six inches with a quarter inch wall thickness. This seller sells them longer than 24 inches, so I could have gotten them longer. If you put two of these back to back like this, so this is one of the extrusions and this is the other. When you stack them up, it'll be four inches by six inches. And that seems like it'll be a really nice size for the column and the base. That's about the size I was at when it was completely out of epoxy granite. And then the whole thing could be filled and it would actually be really strong because it has this intermediate wall. So I was looking at that and thinking if I did it this way then I don't have to make any forms to hold the epoxy because the aluminum extrusion itself would be the form and it'll be really strong. And then you have to think about you know how to join these two pieces together, how to clamp the column to the base, there, there's still a lot of thinking going on. And then I was looking at another idea, making the column and the base out of rectangular aluminum stock. This right side piece is just maybe an inch thick and six inches wide, and same for the back, and then same for the left. And then the front could be inset inwards. Doing it this way, you can get almost any shape you want with just regular materials, and you'd have to screw them all together. So these four here are top-down views of that in four different scenarios. This top left view here, the sides are thick, one inch is thick, and that's thick enough to accommodate the linear rail. And then this little piece here is a clamp for the linear rail, and you can see the shoulder. And then the back piece is thinner. You don't need as much strength there. If anyone's designed a CNC, you know one of the reasons you can't use a straight piece going all the way across is the ball nut takes up a lot of space, more space than the linear ways. So you see this surface here has to be pushed backwards to make room for the ball nut. And by making this out of four distinct pieces, you, you can do that. And then here it's all filled with epoxy. So this would have been a, a nice thing and it would have been very strong and I could make it any size I want because the four pieces are individual. Now this one in the top right, it's similar, but it has four thinner pieces around the perimeter, quarter inch thick. They're not thick enough to put a screw through, right, like this one is. So it needs a block in the corner and the screws would go into there and then it will need a block in the front for the rails so that's another way of doing it but the piece count adds up quite a bit this one here I have thinner side pieces half an inch thick instead of quarter and you see the the block for the rail is is kind of to the side of it and they're machined flat together after it's all epoxy together and screwed together and then here here's another scenario four quarter inch perimeters with blocks in the back but in the front, the actual piece that holds the rail becomes the block. This one here is an iteration of this. Uh, I did this one first, and then I said, well, this is redundant, this block and this block. Let me see if I can put them together. And that worked out really nicely because you need this piece inset anyway to make room for the ball screw. All these here, like this is the front view. This would have been the column, 
and then the base would have been very similar and then it would have been joined together so two pieces joined together this here it has the column and the base machined as one piece uh, so this could be like flat stock laid horizontally on the mill and in one operation I mill this straight down and I mill this across then I mill the perimeter which doesn't matter how square it is the only thing that's accurate is this to this and then you would make two of them so one here and one here and you would somehow tie them together and have the epoxy grounded in between and if you do it this way the advantage is you can set the square of this and this in the bridge port when I machine this and you can make it as wide as you want the width of these blocks could be big enough to hold the linear rails uh, and here I was looking at uh, maybe this can be tapered on the back and the bottom just to make it a little bit lighter weight is a consideration for me I don't want it too heavy one disadvantage of this is depending on the travel of my mill this would have to fit inside otherwise it wouldn't really work and then when I realized this might not fit this next one it's kind of the same idea but the base and the column are screwed together with these four bolts here you would machine the column on its side the base on its side screw them together and after they're screwed together it would look like this I call it a permanent meaning the epoxy granite would cover all the screws you know on the inside this the shading is the epoxy granite so you couldn't take this apart you couldn't take apart the column and the base and then here is another idea. What about making a custom extrusion? I've worked with uh, aluminum extruders before for some prototype work at my day job. And this is definitely something I can design and have made. Tooling might be, you know, a thousand or two thousand dollars. And then you'd have to pay the piece price. In the back of my head, I'm always thinking to quit my day job and start a CNC company for hobbyists. And this could be a very good way to go there. The cross section of the extrusion could look like this. And you would put the rail there. So those were a few brainstorms, and then let me switch back to the CAD. You know, I spent a good amount of time on this, making sure the travels were where I wanted them, and I figured out how long the linear ways needed to be for the column and the base, how far apart they need to be, and how far out the head needs to come to get the machine capability I'm after. So what I did is I made a brand new CAD document, and I called it Frame Brainstorm. This one here, I called it the Frame Skeleton. It's only the surfaces that are really critical this jogged surface here because this needs that jog to accommodate the ball screw it's the rails where I want them the width is right the length is right on both the column and the base since this is a brainstorm I don't know what's gonna happen here I don't know what's gonna be in the back of it all I know is I want the rails to be where they are and I want a pocket for the ball screws this skeleton model what I can do in on shape is I can bring it into as many different models as I want so this first feature called a derive it brings in those surfaces if I unhide them and I can make 10 variations of this and all of them I can bring in these surfaces and that way I can be sure that the ways this uh, offset will be the same and then I can iterate what happens behind it that's uh, one way of top-down design that, that Onshape uses. They have a few other ways also. And when I was using Pro-E, that was called published geometry, and Creo is the same as Pro-E. With that in mind, I started brainstorming using that 2 inch by 6 inch extrusion from eBay. This being only a quarter inch thick, it's not thick enough to hold a screw very well in aluminum. You would put a screw through this hole into this block from the back. And then from the front, you would put a screw through the ways into this block. So let me show you a cross section of that. So here's that aluminum block, and on the back side, we have this socket head cap screw threading into it, and that's a pretty strong screw. And then on the front side, we have the metric screw going into the bed for the way. They alternate. Here's the way screw, the way screw, the way screw, and then here will be a bed screw, a bed screw, a bed screw. Now, how do you get this screw in here? Especially the ones in the middle. You, you can't reach your hand up in here with an Allen key. There's no way. That's what these openings here are for. These pockets here, there, so if I turn on all the instances, so when you pour the epoxy through here, it will go through both pieces and it would unite them and make them super strong. So that's what I was thinking for the column. The base would be the same, two pieces, done the same way. I didn't put all the features in because, again, this is just a brainstorm. So now how do you attach the column to the base? So there could be a block here that is screwed in from the front. It will be as part of the epoxy build up, so it will be surrounded by epoxy. That could have a, a nut here, and this is a really cheap long nut from McMaster. It's actually not a nut, it's, it's like a, a union for two threaded rods. And you can have a long bolt going through that pulls this down. 
so you have all this clamp length on the bolt. The bolt will stretch a little bit and pull the column down to the base. And that's as far as I got on this. I think this was the path I was going to take. Then what happened is I just randomly checked eBay again, and I actually happened to find this extrusion, 6 inches square and 1 half inch wall thickness. So now I don't need two of them put together. I don't need all the hassle of how you join them together. And instead of being a quarter inch wall thickness, it is a half inch wall thickness, which is long enough to hold a screw in aluminum. So this was really promising. And when I saw this on eBay, there was a guy that had a used piece of it, 14 feet long, and it was $250. And it was in Philadelphia, which is where my house is. I was like, I got to buy this. And I called him up and asked if he can cut it into three pieces for me, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to fit it in my car. I don't have a truck. And he was kind enough to cut it into three pieces for me. And then I started designing. And I left this document, because this was just to get the proof of concept. And I went to this document here where I, I really put in a lot more details. That's how we ended up here. So let me show you a few things here. How do you attach the column to the base? If you look inside here, and forgive me I'm colorblind, I think this is blue, but it might be purple. So here's that blue piece, right? And that'll be in while the epoxy's poured. So the epoxy will go above it, below it, and make it really strong. And here's that nut from McMaster, right? And this is a PVC piece. And then the middle piece is a threaded rod going all the way to the bottom. And then it'll have a nut at the bottom. So this whole threaded rod will be in tension from, from this bolt to up here. So it has a long distance to stretch and really get a good cr clamp load on this system. And it's pulling down on this plate. But this plate will be attached to the column with a uh, socket head cap screws from the side. You can see them on both sides. Actually, all four sides, right? And there will be epoxy underneath of it going all the way to this surface, holding everything together. So it will really make a really strong connection. And the reason you have to do that is I'm using the same extrusion for the base and the column. So there's nothing to screw into. Uh, usually on a commercial milling machine, the base will be wider than the column. And then the column will have a flange at the bottom and you can screw that flange into the base. Kind of like uh, this scenario here. With this one being the exact same extrusion, uh, I can't do that. Right now I have eight bolts. Probably don't need that many. Maybe I'll get rid of the front and the back one and just have three per side or maybe even just one on each corner. Then this plate here is just to keep the epoxy in so it has a nice finish. And also on the off chance that this actually deforms when you squeeze it, this plate will add structure to it. That's the way I'm thinking to attach the column and the base together. To put the linear rails on, I still have that same problem. I need room for the ball screw. There needs to be this piece here, which I'm calling the bed for the linear rails. And that has a shoulder machined into it, which will register on the shoulder of the, the linear way. And then I have a clamp, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Let me turn the section on again. So this screw here would attach the, the linear way bed into the column. And because the column is half inch thick, it's got plenty of meat for that screw to thread into. And this will be a, probably a 5 16 18 screw. Then these smaller holes here would be the threaded hole for the metric screw that will hold the linear ways. And by the way, the reason I'm considering mixing metric and standard is these have to be metric because the linear ways are all metric. Making these standard, all the hardware on McMaster car is cheaper, similar size screw if it's inch compared to metric. But I don't think I really need two socket head cap screws next to each other and then spaced apart. Maybe one in the middle will be sufficient. And I'm also thinking I can put not epoxy granite, but regular epoxy between this piece and this piece to have like a bit of a cushion there. I've seen that on some of the CNC designs. I think they call it a constrained layer. It helps the vibration. And now I want to switch into the clamp for the linear way. I spent a lot of time looking on YouTube for how the commercial machines made this shoulder and made this clamp. Uh, but the summary of them is kind of this sketch here. This is all cross section of all of them. This is really simple and it takes the least amount of space. You can space the linear ways as far apart as possible on your base and column. The disadvantage of this one, it has a machining operation on the side and the top. Then this one here, it uses a long rod and it uses a countersunk screw head. And I think this is on a couple machines. Then this here is, is kind of the same, but it uses like a mighty bite clamp, which works on the countersunk screw head principle again to, as you tighten the screw, it, it pushes the clamp to the left. Then here's a similar concept, but instead of the taper coming from the screw head, it comes from the pocket itself. So this is going to be stronger. And then here you can see how this one works. This this piece is a little bit longer than the opening. And when the screw pulls it down, it, it pushes sideways. So I was looking at all these and trying to come up with 
which way to do it. I, I think I kind of settled on this one. Uh, I think it'll be easier to make and it's all on one side and it's it's going to be really strong. So let me switch back to the CAD. That's what's here. So you can see there's interference here. When this is loosened, this clamp plate would move to the left. And as you tighten it, it would force it to the right. I think I added a 20 thousandths of interference here. So when this is all the way tight, it would push with 20 thousandths of interference. So of course, it, it wouldn't actually move it that much. So this screw wouldn't be all the way bottomed out. That's the idea there. And I think I can make these easily on the TAG CNC. Just make a square and then counter bore it. And that'll be it. That's kind of where I am. I have the frame idea pretty well established. I'm doing work on the saddle. I didn't really do much on that yet. I'm just going to buy a piece that's two inches thick and six inches wide. Just machine it out of one block. Uh, we already talked about that in a prior episode. Put those same features here to hold the ways. Here's my top level assembly. It's not really uh, that complete right now. It needs a lot more work. But I think compared to this one here, it's going to be easier to make because I don't have to make all the forms. And it's going to be stronger. Having a full box beam is probably the strongest shape you can get. A round cross section is stronger per mass, but a square cross section is stronger, period. And then filling this with epoxy will dampen the vibration from the aluminum. I don't want the whole thing filled with epoxy. I want it hollow here and here. That's for two reasons. One, I can put the stepper motors there, or excuse me, servo motors inside, so it doesn't take up as much space. And two, I don't want this super heavy, so I'm really trying to keep the weight under 200 pounds, maybe even less, so I can move it around uh, with just a hand truck or something pretty easily. I actually do have the aluminum extrusions in-house, so in the next episode, I'm gonna show you them in person, and I'll show you my Bridgeport milling machine where I plan to build this. So. Thank Thanks for watching. That's all I have for now. I'll catch you guys the next episode.